Hi, good morning. This is Andrew with Faithful Journey RV Services. Just wanted to give you a quick tour of my latest solar install project I just completed. It's on a 2022 Ford Transit van. My client is converting to an RV for him and his wife to live out. So this is the van. We'll just do a quick walk around. Again, it's a 2022 uh, Ford Transit. He's already had a, another company do the tires, the suspension upgrades, sort of you saw on the front, the winch bumper, uh, basically getting it ready for uh, whatever life might uh, getting it ready for whatever life might throw at them while they're on the road. So it's got the, it's the high roof. And here again, you can see the bumper. He's got the winch, he's got lights. He's got this van kitted out to the nines, as they would say. So let me give you a quick tour of the part that I did. So when the client brought the van to me, the previous outfitter, they were able to put two of the three solar panels up on the roof and they didn't put the third one because of the where they had the vent and also the air conditioner there was no room to put the third panel up front now being that vans are also limited on how many panels they can have i'm like we definitely need to get that third one on there so let me show you my solution to get that third panel up on the roof all right so here we are this is up on the roof of the van as you can see there's one two three panels there's an air conditioner and i'll show you here in a second there's a vent fan under this one so the previous outfitter had this panel and this panel installed this panel is actually designed to tilt up from edge to edge so you can go like this or like this um, so that way he can get the panel as best of an angle with the sun as possible so with this this front panel he had a max air fan that stuck up about 12 inches with the vent fan was open and there was no way to fit a panel above it or in front of it so as you can see what i did is i took that max air fan out and i changed it with more of a lower profile vent fan and then i was able to get this panel put a one inch riser underneath the bracket to get it up just a little bit higher to give us about an inch clearance under there but this panel as well if you ever wanted to open that fan all the way the way i did it is i have it so this panel can tilt up from the back so you can tilt this up and then you can open up that vent fan all the way so and then as well you can tilt it and get the max uh, solar out of it as well so that was my solution and so now he's got two uh three 200 watt panels up on the roof generating 600 watts at peak um, in theory of solar for his van all right so on the back of the solar box i built to show you is customer asked for the battery disconnects to be located out here that way in the case of for whatever reason he needs to turn the system off in a hurry you can just flip these three off and it's one for each of the batteries so i'll make it quick easy to shut off and then you'll see here there's a vent fan here and then this is just a normal outlet where he can use for charging his devices. So the cool thing about this fan is there's another identical fan that's located behind the solar charge controller as well. So the one behind the solar charge controller will blow the air into the box. And then this one on the back here will exhaust the hot air out. So and that is temperature controlled with a temperature sensor inside the box, which can then communicates with the, the servo. And so when it gets above a certain temperature, it kicks those fans on to try to keep, help keep things cool. When it gets cool enough, it cuts it off. So, and then another feature that was requested by the customer is he wanted his shore power cord where you connect it hidden. And he wanted it 
specifically under the bumper. So if we come under here, you'll see this right here. So open it up, plug your 30 amp in, and then that's where he gets his short power connection from. So hidden under the bumper, out of the way, out of sight, and then there's nothing external on the outside having to cut in. So, and now we'll go tour the, the rest of the system from the inside. Let's go inside and see where the stuff happens. So we come inside the van. Right now the van is still in process of being converted. So there's nothing yet uh, bedding, livability wise yet inside that's still in process, still being completed. So he's got a plan and I'm step one of getting the solar installed. So in the back here, this idea is this back part here there'll be a bed across and then this blank space next to the solar stuff will be a sort of like the garage access from the back um, that's about what I know at this point I know he's going to have his fresh tank over here and I think possibly a refrigerator is what this was built for over here so that's what we're working on so let me show you so over here when you come in above the door is the touch screen you click it on you can see what's all running so got your overview of your dc system your solar coming in with your battery status and then i'll show you here in a second he's also got his fresh and his gray tank sensors which i installed for him as well so coming over here this is the the medic dc 12 volt air conditioner that he is running it does pull about 600 watts when it's going full tilt so it's a good thing he's got a large battery bank so what i'm doing now is i have an acrylic panel over the opening that i'm just going to slide out just to be able to show you the stuff inside so this is the system i installed the customer provided three of these game changer uh 270 amp hour battleborne batteries so he provided those as well as he provided the solar charge controller and one of the lynx distributors so i designed the system around what he was providing as well as his needs for the system so we have a 3000 watt multi plus here uh, we got the dc to dc charger so when the van is running it's charging the batteries and then this is our where the battery power comes in this is the distribution of the DC side, and then that's our shunt to keep track of our state of charge. So we got 810 amp hours of battery, 600 watts of solar, which is on the low side for that, that, that large battery bank, but that's what we could fit on the roof. And he knows the limitations of the system, and he will have a generator as well. So up here, this is just the disconnect for the air conditioner, just in case he needs to turn that off. So we got the servo, the brains, the panel disconnect over here so that is the solar system I, I put together it's working really well so now let me show you the tank sensors all right so he's gonna have his fresh tank over here and he was gonna have originally a separate control panel next to the touchscreen for his tank sensors and i'm like why would you do that why not just integrate it with the victron equipment so he's like well how do we do that so this is what the solution is found these resistive tank sensors so we we'll need to cut a hole in the tank and put it in there and the way these work is this as it moves up it changes it sends a signal through the wire to the servo so if I move, I'll show you here, if I put this all the way up to the top and then we come over here, we can now see the tank is reading 94%. Now, if I move this all the way to the bottom, where it would be in an empty, empty position, you can see it's live, it's emptying as it goes. So, and now it's reading red, empty. So I also have a tank sensor as well for the gray tank for when he gets to when he gets that installed and then he'll be able to have both of those access. And the beauty of this system is he'll have remote support from me because he's got the servo just has to connect it to the internet and I'll be able to 
connect in remotely and troubleshoot and help him tweak settings um, as he goes down the road. So this is my latest project and it's working well and I'm sure the client's going to be happy when he comes to pick it up in a couple days. Thanks for watching.